Welcome to another episode of The Shift with Elena Agar. In this episode, I talk with Dev Devin Price. Um, Devin is a cybersecurity professional and super passionate about this topic. So we really dug into how he got started in the field, how he's growing there. And he loves it so much that he has a podcast around it and not just cyber, but just tech, which is called Talking Tech Podcast. So he loves the world of tech and cyber, and he's very knowledgeable in this field. So we really dug into his career story and really just kind of what is he's looking for towards the future. Future. He also gave me some tips of what us as regular folks not understanding in necessarily cybersecurity world should be aware of and what are some things to keep in mind as we navigate this world of internet and everything uh, with data that's out there and our own data that's out there and kind of some things that we need to be mindful of. So I found that insightful, inspiring, and just a really interesting conversation, particularly if you're interested in tech and cyber. Check it out. Devin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. You know, it's I, I was just talking to somebody else on a, on a, on a different podcast. And um, what I love about um, the world of internet is LinkedIn. I meet so many amazing people through LinkedIn. I'm so glad, you know, you and I got connected. You recommended me to to Kenneth, who I had a pleasure yes. speaking with. And it's just, and, you know, and it's just the it's, it's a powerful network. And, you know, and I love I'm thankful for the podcasting. And you know this very well as a podcaster yourself. Because yes. I always say, like, how often can you just message a stranger and like, hey, do you want to come talk talk about your career? <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I'm really excited to talk to you about your interesting journey of uh, world of tech and how you got into it and just where you headed. So talk, tell me a little bit more about how you got into tech. So I got into tech uh, really through my parents. Uh, both of my parents have been in the technology field since as long as I remember. They're still there. And uh you know, I would ask my parents when I was growing up, you know, how was work or you know, what happened at work? And I would always kind of learn about what they were doing. And technology was always a part of that. So uh, my senior year in high school, when I was trying to figure out you know, what am I going to uh, go to college for, uh, I, I really didn't know. And my dad would always tell me growing up, you know, Devin, you know, based on your personality, and just, you know, me being your dad, I really think you'd be good at this, at this technology stuff. And, uh, initially, I was like, no, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do that. Um, just because I, you know, I didn't want to do what my dad uh, wanted to do. <laughs> I was at, at that age and I thought I you know, knew everything. And yeah. um, But he kept, he kept saying it. And I got to the point in my senior year where we had to do a, a year long project. Uh, where You have to, you know, just study something for a year, write a report on it and give a presentation. And I needed a topic. And I think my dad had said it to me again. I was like, OK, let's. You know, I'm going to spend this year uh, focusing on technology and, and do my my seminar uh, on that. And that way, if, if, you know, if this isn't what I like, I can at least tell my dad, hey, I gave it a try. No. Uh, and, and you're wrong. Uh, long story short, or short, long story short, uh, he was right. Um, I loved it. Once I really, like, got into it, studied it, um, I loved the technology field. And I was like, yep, this is what I'm going to go to. To college for you know went to college and that's that's it the rest is history yeah you mentioned um you know you that's like you have the personality what is the personality of a tech yeah. person because i'm always curious about that you know because it is a specific yeah. type of like personality i could never do it let's just put it that way <laughs> yeah i like from from actual experience i would say um if you like figuring out how how technology works uh if that's of interest to you if you're you know you have a smartphone or you have a mobile app game that you play or, or you're watching Netflix and something inside of you is just like, how does all this work? Um, there, there's certain people where it's just like, hey, um, you know, I turn on my Netflix, you know, my, whatever my streaming service is and, and it works and I, that I don't I'm care. that person. <laughs> that's that's say, that's, I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I have no uh, desire to know what's going on inside this little little machine or, or uh, computing device. But, you know, if you're at all interested in like, how does this work? Um, that may be something that uh, you may be, may be open to to a field in technology. I think if you always want to learn, that's that's a huge one. If you um, if you're kind of like, hey, I I want to learn up to a point, and then I'm kind of good. Uh, this field may not be for you because the thing with technology, it changes every at this point every eighteen months. So if you if you have learned uh, some type of technology and you're like, oh, I'm good, I mastered it. Can assure you within 18 months uh something else brand new will come up and you'll have to learn that otherwise you'll, you'll get you'll get left behind so those are probably the, the 
big two that came to mind right now, just mm. being a continual learner and just having a fascination with, with just how technology works. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. And, you know, I, I'm in tech as well, as you know, but I do talent development and kind of talent acquisition. Uh, and, and it's, um, you know, and it took me so long to be able to, you know, really kind of understand that profile of, of it, to be able to get the right talent, right? So I think you're spot on on those things. And um, and it's and every time I, 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 you know, I sit with our software development team and I'm like, I don't know how you guys do what you do. It is such a challenge. It's, it really requires a certain kind of mindset. I don't, I don't have even a 1% a, a of that mindset, sadly. Um, but it's, it's pretty amazing, the, the work and, and the, the fast-paced growth of this field as well. It's yes. crazy. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, so what, what part of, like, where are you in tech right now? Tell me a little bit more in, in that. So I, right now, I'm in the cybersecurity field or uh, the information security field. You may, you, might, you may hear that said at times, which really all that means is um, we have all of this digital information uh, on social media, within our phones, in all, all of these uh, pieces of data within all of these different devices that we use. And we have to make sure that that information is secure. Uh, you want to make sure that when you log into, uh, let's just say your banking app, if you're with you know, Bank of America, for example, everyone has an app now. Uh, how do we ensure that when you log in to your banking uh, app, only you are able to log in, somebody else who is not you is not able is not able to log in. That's kind of where information security uh, comes about. I think there's been some social media um, events that happen, which is a uh, whatever your favorite social media app is. We hear about hey, so and so got got breached. Mm -hmm. um, somebody was able to uh, steal, uh, let's just say, personal information about a social media user. That's mm -hmm. where why cybersecurity is so important. Uh, if you put in healthy and I think basic cybersecurity practices uh, in place for that social media app or, or whatever, um, it's going to make that situation a lot harder uh, to occur. So that's why I like cybersecurity because you're, yeah. you're literally protecting uh, people's digital, I guess, profile and information. Yeah, yeah, they're digital assets ultimately. Yes. Um, what are some stupid mistakes that people make? You're like, please, people, stop doing that. You're going to get it hacked. <laughs> right. Um, I would say the number one is using the same password uh, for multiple sites, because if your password is breached on one site and you're using the same password on all these other ones, uh, that attacker, as we call them, uh, if they can use, if they can find that one password in your one username and you use it everywhere else, they they have essentially uh, breached you on, on several fronts instead of just one. Versus if you have different passwords. Uh, for different sites, if they get one, then all these other sites are, are probably still okay. Mm -hmm. um, another one I would say, and this is a really probably easy one, if there is a security feature on any app that you have or any type of technology that you buy, like your phone, um, any type of, of security feature, I would turn that on to at least the basic level. Um, and the reason why that is, uh, is just because this concept called defense in depth which is basically meaning make it make an attacker have to work hard uh, to get your information. Mm -hmm. So if you only have, let's just say your house, right? If you have a house, one, I guess, layer of protection that you have is your front door. You could lock your front door. That's one layer of protection. Of course, if somebody has a crowbar, um, then you're out of luck. But if you have a uh, lock and you also have a security system, well, then that means when they do break in, an alarm's going to go off and they're probably going to run away because it's like, okay, the police will, or so-and-so will be here in five minutes. This probably isn't the house I want to go to. So that's really what that defense in depth is. is just make it make it hard uh, for somebody to, to get your information. Um, and if there's, if there's a security feature, turn it on. That's probably mm -hmm. how I would say that. I almost want to stop this podcast and go change all my passwords. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that after this. <laughs> I know I should, but it's like, how do you remember? Uh, like, it's like, there's, I forget, there's a comedian and he was talking about like how, how it just evolves, you know what I mean? And it's yep. like, you just have to, and then it's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, but it's, it's true. I mean, it's so you see this a lot, you know, people being hacked, companies being hacked, you know, it's a big thing and, and it's a pain in the ass if you do get hacked. I mean, God forbid. 
oh my goodness like the i, I can't even imagine so it's, yeah. it's crazy that's um, what i would say if hmm. it if you um implementing additional security is a pain for you it will be a pain for the person that's trying to to hack you so if yeah. it's easy for you it'll be easy for them Oh, you see, now you're just, now just making everybody feel guilty on that. I bet you I people listening to this, I'm changing this right now. <laughs> Going through the security settings. <laughs> no, it's an excellent point. I think I think we don't, because you're in that world and and people that are yeah. not in that world, we have no idea how. They how don't the, we, yeah, it's like, people, we don't know what we don't know. And, well, maybe most, we know, people, know. most people are, are, are goodwill. Um, and probably the classic question that I hear in my industry uh, more than anything uh, nobody would ever do that. <laughs> Who thinks to do that? Absolutely. Like almost every security breach has started with that. Nobody would ever do that. Unfortunately, there are some people that think that way. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, how, so, so you, you've been in the field for quite some time. How do you <laughs> feel is the situation between talent, uh, or cybersecurity talent and the needs of companies, for example, because it seems like when you look in the media, you, people are telling you there's a gap, but then like right. I was just talking to Kenneth and, and, and then, you know, he's like, well, yes, but it's very competitive and it's, you know, and it's also, so it's like, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hear your perspective. There are, I think, two schools of thought that I think they're both like a bit. Um, one is saying there's not a cybersecurity uh, talent shortage. And that's because a lot of the hiring managers, recruiters, they are looking for, um, they're looking for candidates in, in the same places. Um, so I think there's a common quote, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So if you are looking in the same place for the same, you know, for talent and, and you're coming up short, maybe it's time to look, you know, elsewhere or outside of your uh, perspective. So that that's one approach, which I do believe in, of looking for diverse candidates um, is only going to help secure your product or service uh, in a better way, because you're going to have diverse sets of opinions. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have just one one type of attacker. Attackers come in all all shapes and, and uh, sizes and, and demographics. So you want those yeah. same people figuring out what's the best way for us to protect um, our product. So that, that's one school of thought. The other school of thought is I think there needs to be more education with cybersecurity about what it takes to uh, trans transition or pivot into the field, because a lot of I think cybersecurity jobs are labeled, some of them are labeled as entry level when they really actually do require um, a little bit of at least, I would say, technical knowledge of some point. So some of those jobs are missing and they really do need to create an actual cybersecurity role that is entry level um, versus some others. It's like, I think they, they say it's entry level, but it's really not. Mm. Um, so I think I've, I've heard, I've heard both uh thoughts and i think i think there's a, a truth to to both of them there yeah 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 it's a, it, it, it's just interesting because i'm i as you know i'm i'm in tech but it's um and i do recruit for some cyber roles yeah. um like our team does um but it's and yeah and it's like we always call them unicorns like we just recruit yeah. for unicorns like that's what it feels like it's like yeah it's crazy like that's how it feels like the expectations of clients and like you know ma hiring managers it's like you basically want me to find a unicorn, you know, it's, it, it is, yeah. I, so yeah, I hear, I, I hear you on both sides for sure. It's interesting. Um, what about, um, so what, what are some of the things, so I know you have a podcast uh, mm -hmm. and because you're, you're so passionate about this topic. Yes. <laughs> so what sparked that, that, the podcast? So uh, the podcast is, is called the Talking Tech Podcast. And really all that's about is me interviewing uh, technology and cybersecurity professionals who are already in either the uh, the tech space or the cybersecurity space, and also giving a platform for people who may be either starting out in their career or maybe in a different career field and want to pivot into you know cybersecurity or technology. I really kind of want that platform to show uh, their skills. So that's that's what my podcast is about. And the reason why I started it is I frequently, probably over the past I think three three or four years. I just started having virtual uh, coffee chats with other professionals who are in technology and cybersecurity because I was trying to figure out, um, you know, where do I want to go in my career? And I think somebody told me, hey, just start uh, having conversations with people who are, are at 
uh, companies you want to be at, but they kind of their career looks like what you want. And so I would just reach out to people uh, on LinkedIn, kind of like you said, it's a, it's a wonderful place with a lot of opportunities. And just saying, hey, so and so, you know, I, I like your career, or I like where you're at. Uh, could I have 15 to 20 minutes of your time and just ask you some questions? And over time, um, I guess I got good at at asking questions that people um, that people liked. I had two people that I, I spoke to within one week that didn't know each other, and both of them were like, "You asked really, you know, thought provoking questions. You know, do you have a podcast or have you started a podcast?" And I was like, "No, I, I haven't." Um, and then I just kind of took that weekend. I was like, "Hey, why don't why don't I start?" I've been in the technology and cybersecurity space for for a little bit. Um, you know, I have some things to say, and I definitely know other people out there have some great things to say, and just kind of uh, just started. Yeah. And did you figure out what you want? What's next for you in the tech world? Uh, oh yeah. At the time, I think yeah. I knew that I wanted uh, a role that was a mixture of technology and I would say program management or project management. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like, obviously, I like technology. I love, excuse me. Um, Love with just new, when new technology comes out, and I just have a passion for securing that technology now. Mm -hmm. But I also like uh, working with other people to, you know, accomplish a goal uh, or a project or a program. I like uh, that aspect of kind of getting on a call with people and kind of figuring out how are we going to solve uh, this problem. So I like the the mixture of those two. Yeah, that's cool. And where did, so where so do you, do you see yourself staying in the long term, or like what are uh, what are some aspirations for the future for you? So as far as like just just my role, just overall. yeah, like yeah, what's the ultimate goal? Oh, so the how far? Goal... Can, well, I guess how far can you go? Like, what are what is the career trend trend uh, trajectory in cyber? Right. So the farthest you can go, uh, I would say probably probably two things is number one, you can uh, start your own. I've seen people, you know, their own cybersecurity consulting uh, business. Uh, so just you know, going business for yourself. But number two, if you want to. Um, continue to be a full-time employee, you can be what's known as a, as a CISO or a Chief Information Security Officer. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you know, pick whatever company, uh, you know, your favorite company is. The CISO would be the top uh, cybersecurity person. So any type of cybersecurity uh, issues or risks to the company, this person would ultimately be uh, responsible for. That's a lot of pressure right there. It's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of stress and it leads to people uh, if, if they don't have, I guess, not coping mechanisms, but ways to de-stress, it, it can really lead to burnout. Yeah. Um, so I don't know quite yet if, if I want to be uh, a CISO just because of that. Um, but I definitely do want to uh, be at a position where I can, I can both, I can do cybersecurity technical. I can have a little bit of the technical cybersecurity aspect of the job but also still be a project manager or program manager. Yeah. Um, but, but as far as like how, how far, um, I'm not sure quite. Yeah, it's, uh, but it's like, you know, with, with the higher roles, there's more responsibility, obviously, yep. more, re more rewards as well. But it sounds yep. just, you know, because it's just changing. I feel like it's one of the few fields today, you know, that are just, you know, escalating in terms of, um dangers in terms oh, of yeah. you know what i'm saying so like I'm, i mean i'm completely clueless when it comes to certain things for sure like uh, just like you know just i think like most people sadly <laughs> i don't know what that says about us i should probably be more in tune but um but i'm curious like what are some challenges that are out there that we like like us like regular people you know like uh that don't know about what like oh that's that's like recent let's say oh uh, well i would say some of the things that I think a normal person may run into from a cybersecurity cyber perspective is actually the beginning of, or not really the beginning, but the start of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was a, um, there's ChatGPT that came out in November of uh, 2022. So that I think probably hit the media. Um, your average person, I think, may know what, what ChatGPT is. Yeah. Uh, it's just basically a chatbot that if you give it responses, it can, it can actually generate for you uh, real responses. So not like a chat bot, if you go on a company website and it only has, it can only respond to a, a couple of questions. Uh, chat GPT, I think, can respond to almost any query that you give it with information that I believe is, I think 20, they capped it at 2021. 
So if you ask it about anything that happened uh, after 2021, it's not going to know it. But anything yeah, I think you're that, right. Yeah, it can it can help you generate a letter. It can help you um, work on your resume. It just it can do amazing things. So that is something that, from a security perspective, there are very smart people, smarter than me, who are trying to figure out how do we not uh, let this this generative AI chatbot. Um, how do we not let attackers use it for evil purposes? Um, mm. Because just like you can use it to help you write a cover letter for a job, let's just say, hey, based on uh, this description, you can input uh, the description in chat, chat GPT, you can input your resume, and it can help you write a cover letter, cover letter based on uh, your skill set. Just like it can do that. And unfortunately, at least when it came out, you know, it could help people, let's just say, if they want to how do I, you know, create a bomb or something like that? Um, unfortunately, again, that's how people think. Um, so chat GPT for a little bit, I think, could help people do malicious things. Now, I think as it's gone on more, they've trained chat GPT to not allow people to do that. But that's always still a a danger uh, yeah. with artificial intelligence. They can be used for great, great impact, but it can also be used uh, maliciously. I think probably another um another thing that's going on just from a cybersecurity perspective and artificial intelligence is um just the creation of of generative images so not only can chat gpt or other artificial intelligence um can it create i think text but it can also create images and mm -hmm. i think one of the things that's going on right now is the strike or the writer strike and actor strike that's going on in in hollywood mm -hmm. uh, which some people may be covering but a good portion of that is with artificial intelligence, a lot of uh, writers, designers who usually uh, would be writing all of your, your favorite shows or your um, designing images like that, that you see on your shows, they are concerned that artificial intelligence is going to take their job um, or that you know, they're not going to be compensated for what they write. Um, so that's, that's a, it's not a security I would say a security issue, but it is an issue of how artificial intelligence is probably impacting uh, your average person. Uh, if you don't see yeah. your shows on, like, hey, you know, fall is coming. Uh, why aren't my favorite shows on? Well, that's why artificial intelligence is uh, really starting to influence outside of just technology. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, those strikes have been going on for for months now. I think so. It's yeah. uh, it's uh, it's. I don't even know what's the latest update on it, but it's it's crazy. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty scary. I mean, I'm kind of like I'm on I'm on like I'm on the fence. Like I'm not a person who's like terrified of AI. I'm kind of excited about it. I think it makes my life easier in many ways. Um, I'm I'm just more like concerned about the security of it. Like like what's you know what do we need to be what do we need to know and you know and then of course we have like all the movies that we watch like iRobot and yeah. all the well, the other ones the Machina whatever it is you know and that's the reality. I mean there was there was a um uh, they put a robot at uh, at a was it a Jets game or I don't know? Did you see it recently? Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, that? that's that's my uh, that's my team. I'm actually a uh, Los Angeles Rams fan. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, they had a robot. I think it was uh, I think three three robots to promote. I think the new movie coming out this month, the uh, the creator, which is about uh, I think artificial intelligence gone wrong. So I think they were promoting the movie, but yeah, I think that's people are starting to see that, and I think it freak you know freaks some people out. Like whoa, like they look almost you know human. Yeah, and now we got. Did you see the alien, uh, the one that the alien that they released which, in Mexico? Which this is not no. about IT, but it just reminds me because it was just literally today. They the uh, Mexican officials uh, showcased a uh, alien a alien body or something like that, like an actual oh, like oh, the, small see, the small yes, one. I, did, I was like, I did fake see news. I was like, what is happening? You I know, just, yeah. I was like, every time they release stuff like that, I'm like, what are they really hiding from us? Like, what yep. what is this a distraction from? Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? You like you release a robot, then you show us an alien. Like, what is happening? Like, it's just scary out there. And 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 I guess that's to to, to the point of, of of security. Like, there's so much information out there, and yeah. it's like, how do you not like the fact? That, I mean, some part of me is like, I'm kind of glad that we're so like like regular people are just like, yeah, whatever. Because I think we start paying yeah. attention, you start losing your shit. You're like, what is happening? Like if you really start yeah. paying attention to everything that's happening through through technology right now, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's scary. It's scary. Yeah, and, and I think that's why 
uh, yeah, it, it is. I think if, if your average person was aware of, um, from a cybersecurity perspective, how how malicious I think these attacks can be, um, it would probably keep people people up at night. But that's the great thing I love about being part of the cybersecurity industry. We have a lot of smart people who are um, who are on the defense. Um, a lot of people and, and three letter agencies that that are uh, dealing with with issues and cybersecurity attacks that the general public hopefully we'll never know about because they were they were prevented or mitigated. Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't want to know. Don't tell me that. <laughs> Even if you know, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's 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 uh it's it's pretty interesting and it's and I think we just don't even think about it, which is why like I was interested to have a conversation with you and Kenneth because I mean, I don't know. And, and, you know, and I consider myself a relatively smart person <laughs> most days, you know, and, but it's like, there's just, you know, this is something that's completely out of my realm of understanding. And it's like having these conversations. And that's what this whole podcast is about. Like, how do you, how do you continue to evolve and grow and take ownership of your own development and try to, you know, have these conversations and know what's happening and just educate yourself. Um, I, I think it's important and I'm on tech, so I probably should know more about cyber than I do. <laughs> But anyway, um, what are you most excited for for the following year for yourself, whether professionally or personally, or maybe on the podcast side? Uh, well, I think yeah, I think I'll just I'll tackle all those. Uh, personally, um, my wife and I we just had our uh, firstborn son in oh, December okay. of 2022. Congratulations! So is, thank you. He is eight months uh, at, at the time of this recording, so I'm excited to just see him uh, start to walk and. Really starting to come into his own. Um, wife and I, you know, first time parents, so that I think personally, uh, looking forward to. Uh, professionally, I'm studying for. Speaking of cybersecurity, I'm studying for uh, a certification. It's called the Certified Information Systems Security Professional, or CISSP, and that is essentially the gold standard when it comes to being an information security uh, professional. It's kind of like, uh, let's just say like a plumber. Um, actually, no, let's just say with, with a doctor, uh, right? We don't just let uh, anyone say, hey, I'm, I'm a doctor, trust me. You know, when mm -hmm. you go in perspective. Uh, no, you, you want to see that person. You know, where, where did you go to school? Uh, where's your medical license? Um, like, show me, because you're, you're about to operate uh, on me. And so the CISSP is kind of like that for information security. Um, there, of course, there are a lot of cybersecurity professionals, such as myself, who are not certified to do great work. But this is kind of, I guess, uh, it's a worldwide certification that um, it just, it uh, it lets people know it, it validates your cybersecurity skills to, to employers. So I've been studying for that, excuse me, studying for that this year and hope to sit for that soon and pass that. Um, and I think as far as from the podcast is I, I'd love to just continue to uh, interview uh, just great technology and cybersecurity professionals or people who are interested in getting into that field. I think I already have lined up two people uh, on the podcast. One is a uh, a PhD candidate in, in cybersecurity, which I uh, wow. can't wait for people to hear about. And another that I'm talking with right now, she's the top uh, healthcare management uh, voice on, on LinkedIn. And she is going to talk about uh, how important it is for technology to be used to bring uh, health equity to uh, to everyone out there to make sure that healthcare is affordable for everyone. Yeah, that that's interesting. Yeah, the healthcare piece that's really really interesting. Oh, that's yeah. a whole other discussion we can get into. Just the 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 the, the, the talking about equity, the inequality of just access to information, access to yep. uh, healthcare, and it's uh it's yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about it, but I just know that the, the, there are for sure gaps. Right, yep. it's like it would it, like in any other field, really, in education, same thing, right? And just in general, Correct. but healthcare, um, I'm sure there's a there's a huge there's a huge gap there. I'm sure. I mean, we see this all the time, and especially being in America, so it's uh, yep. you know, which is very surprising because it's like I've spent um, I think you know, but I've spent many years abroad, and when mm -hmm. I came back to America, I've started to see so many you know so many issues that I just didn't see before. I don't know if it was because I just um was younger maybe maybe you know what I mean like maybe just yeah. not paying attention maybe just you know I don't know I was th probably just thinking about what the hell I'm supposed to do in life so maybe just yeah. bothered me and when I came back you know a little bit more seasoned as a professional as a person yep. you know and having spent time abroad um you know with everything that's going on around the world and people always you know 
uh, talk, you know, in America, we spent a lot of time talking about what's happening abroad, but it's like, there's so much happening here and being abroad opened up my eyes when I came back and I was like, wait a minute, what happened? Like, or, you know what I mean? Like, how did I not see some of these things that are, that that are happening in in, in America? And so, and I came back and obviously like 2021 with all the Mm -hmm. craziness going on at that time. So it's, uh, um, it, yeah, it's, um, it's in a discussion to be had. So I'm curious to to hear that one. That'll be really interesting. So definitely do yep. share with us. Coming soon. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm excited for you. Um, I'm really excited we connected. What I love about you is that the way you talk about tech and cyber and the way you break it down to us simple people <laughs> is like you make you 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 really make really good um, kind of comparisons and it's it's very easy to learn about tech and that's what I love about it and even like uh, Kenneth you know in the education that he does w- with tech as well like I appreciate when people can explain it in a very simple manner about why we should care what matters what do we should watch out for and I think it's it's a beautiful thing so. Thank you so much for, 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 for making the time for this. Um, where can people talk to you and find out more about what you're doing? Maybe, you know, uh, pitch themselves to be on your podcast. Sure. I am. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is very easy. It's D-E-V-I-N-P-R-I-C-E. Um, I have my, my smile there, so I'm, I'm not hard to find. Hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, we can talk. You can also subscribe uh, to the Talking Tech Podcast, which is also uh, that link is available on my LinkedIn. You can also find us on YouTube. Uh, again, I'm pretty active, so I'm not a hard person to find. Reach out. Let's talk. Uh, if you want to be on the podcast, and I'd love to kind of have that discussion. And um, last question I want to ask you is, what is one question you wish people would ask themselves more often? Oh, uh, like, is, is this just in general or just about the career, career stuff? Whatever you want. Um, if you had one question you wish everybody would ask themselves more often. I'd probably say why. Like why why am I doing why am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people they you know are very busy, especially with I think you know the United States culture, you know, very busy, busy, very go go. Um, and people kind of get stuck in a rut. Um, and it's like, you know, this is kind of what I do week in, week out. But just kind of, you know, take a take a some time maybe on a weekend or maybe on an off day of just like, okay, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing? Is this where I want to go? Uh, not, you know, what do, what do I need to do to change? Hmm. Beautiful. Important question. I agree. We don't ask ourselves this question. Uh, well, there are two things I'm going to do this weekend is change all of my passwords and continue to ask myself the why question. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> Appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me.